my dogs are fighting. So if you hear heavy breathing, it's not me. Go lay down. Good dogs. Kevin, who am I, I mean, Kurt, who am I missing in the tree commission? I have Scott. Oh, what are you thinking of? Scott, Tony, and Kevin. And you and me. Yeah. And, well, and... Uh, um, Sean. Sean, yeah. Okay, I just, all of a sudden I had blank. No, that's everybody. Yeah. You're just forgetting us. I know, I guess, yeah. So it's five. I feel like it was more. I guess because Sean. Yeah. The sixth man. Yeah. Lucky guy. <laughs> Well, I'd like to welcome everyone to uh, our program tonight. I'm going to wait another minute or so before I turn it over to Kurt and Mary. Sounds good. With the light change in all the yard work, it's hard to come in. <laughs> I know. It seems hard to believe it's 7 o'clock. I know. I know. Getting used to this over again. And a beautiful day. It was outstanding. Oh, I did see your dog walk behind you, Mary, I think. Oh, did you? <laughs> like a figure. <laughs> yeah, big black shadow. <laughs> yes. Yeah, he's a mama's boy. Aww. That's only one. There's two. She's oh, one. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I have one black and one white. Aw. Yeah. They're both settled down now. They got their Zoom. Their seats of the show. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Front row. We'll go ahead and I'll, I'll make some announcements. Sure. Um, welcome to our program tonight. Uh, it's a tree thing. And I want to thank um, Ancient Oaks for spearheading the program and lining up um, our speakers, Mary and Kurt. Uh, before I turn it over to them, I just want to mention a couple of things coming up in the next uh, few days, week. Tomorrow, um, we are uh, having a tree giveaway in front of the library between 3.30 and 5.30. Uh, we are giving out free red oak seedlings. So, um, if you want to stop by the library, it's just right on our front walkway. I think tomorrow is going to be a beautiful day. So we'll be outside um, between three, well, starting at 3.30 until our supplies um, run out. So um, feel free to stop by and grab one and come in the library and check out some things and <laughs> head home. Um, and then on Saturday, May 6th, we have our annual Green Your Routine. Uh, event. This is our annual shredding and recycling day um, that's open to residents and it's going to run from 8.30 to 11.30 in the library's parking lot. Um, I suggest if you have shredding that uh, you get there earlier than later. Um, we are taking um, shredding until basically the, the truck fills and sometimes it tr fills pretty quick. So um anyway saturday may 6 8 30 to 11. uh tonight's presentation if you have any questions or comments go ahead and type them into the q a um and mary or kurt will answer those uh during the presentation so um they're going to take questions during during their their chat tonight um 
it is being recorded, our session tonight. So if you have to leave early or want to replay any of the presentation, it will go up on our YouTube site uh, within the next few days. So you can look for it there. Um, I think that's all I have as far as announcements. Um, this is Mary and Kurt. Um, they're going to do some introductions and talk a little bit more about themselves. But thank you both for being here tonight to present this lecture. And I will go ahead and turn it over to you. Well, thank you, Valerie. It's always great to do a program with you guys. And I hang out at the library a lot. Um, my name is Mary Kozub, and I am on the Tree Commission for the Village of Lake Zurich been on it for like over 27 years, I believe. Um, I'm the vice chair. I'm also the president of the Ancient Oaks Foundation. So, you know, when you say we're doing it together, me, but um, <laughs> a couple of things, announcements, and I could tell you a little bit um, about Ancient Oaks. We're the only conservation organization in 60047. Um, please check out our website, ancientoaksfoundation.org. I don't want to take up a lot of time, but we have some great programs coming up. Wildflower Walk on the 13th. Um, we do have um, also a college scholarship available for $1,000. So to apply for that, certainly go to our website and you can fill all that out right there. Um, there's lots of resources on the website. If you have any questions about Ancient Oaks, you can email me through the website. Um, the Tree Commission has always been um, a, a private project as well as a professional. So my background is, um, there's our website right now. Valerie's pulling it up for us. That and, was me. Oh, that was you. Thanks, Kurt. Um, yeah. But I forgot where it was now. We're talking about, oh my You're background. talking about professional. You're going to tell yeah, me about your yeah. professional so, background. A uh, degree in natural resource management, uh, worked in environmental education for 30 years, and am now retired, but working on ancient oaks like all the time too. And um, that's about it professionally. It goes by fast when you're trying to go short. But I do want to introduce Kurt Hansen, who's on our tree commission um, here in the village. He's been around, I think, seven years already. Kurt? Uh, it's more than that. It's we're at more than eight. So we might wow. even be to, to nine and we might even be pushing on 10 at That's this awesome. point. So That's time awesome. flies. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I'm Kurt Hansen. I'm another one of the uh, commissioners on the Lake Zurich Tree Commission. Um, my background, I'm an ecologist by trade and by education. I uh, graduated from the University of Illinois, um, worked for uh, Christopher Burke Engineering as environmental consultant out of Rosemont, uh, working for a number of municipalities, developers, ComEd, uh, utilities, et cetera, um, for a while. Um, and then I now work for a different environmental consulting firm, uh, Environmental Consulting and Technology, ECT. And uh, I work on a number of like renewable energy projects um, and a lot of uh, early development, planning, man maintenance and management, man, yeah. man oh my goodness. <laughs> monitoring and management uh, projects. So like cool restoration sites, stuff like that. Um, but what I was going to, we're going to start off, I'm going to do the first half of this and then Mary's going to take the second half. Let's go. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is actually the tree commission itself and why the tree commission exists and uh, the kind of a, a bigger picture. So um, the Arbor Day Foundation, uh, which was actually founded by um, one of the, uh, children of the Morton Salt fame, um, mm -hmm. which is also where the Morton Arboretum comes from. Uh, the Arbor Day Foundation oversees a program called Tree City. So to be a tree city, you have to meet these four overarching standards that I've got shown on the screen here. The number one is that you have to maintain a tree board or department. So that would be both the um, actual uh, arborist who's on staff, who's Sean Walkington, and then the tree board would be the tree commission, which is made up of uh, Mary and myself, and then uh, um, uh, Scott Garrison, Kevin Scheiweiler, and uh, Tony, I'm blanking on Tony's last name. Harper, Harper. Tony Harper, yeah. So that's the, the tree commission. Um, then you also have to have a community tree ordinance, 
which we'll be talking about the ordinance here in Lake Zurich in a little bit. Um, you have to be spending at least $2 per capita on your urban forestry. So that can be everything from planting to trimming to uh, any sort of even like adding extra nutrients. And then every year you have to do a celebration of Arbor Day, which um, uh, can include uh, either actually having an event, doing a proclamation, planting a tree, et cetera. So uh, the Tree Commission assists with making sure that we celebrate Arbor Day every year so we can keep our tree uh, city recognition growing. And then if you do a bunch of extra pieces, uh, you can actually get a growth award, which is like when we send the Lake Zurich Arborist to uh, a big conference to learn about new things that are going on with either diseases or um, the spread of um, different trees now having new um, native habitats. Um, that is something that gets us a, extra points towards a growth award. Um, trying to switch to my next tab and I actually can't see it with the bar in the way, but there we go. Um, so we're gonna start here actually with the Lake Zurich website. If you've never been there before, there is quite a bit of information on the website. Where we're gonna go today is actually to services first. And once we get into services, we're looking for F here, which is forestry. And when you get into forestry, there is actually a ton of information. Um, you can see here, there's a whole section about the value of trees, um, the private tree removal permit application. Um, we've put together information about pruning your trees and pruning your shade trees um, with different uh, either um, historical and uh, career knowledge from either Sean Walkington uh, Scott. or uh, Scott Garrison, who actually used to be one of the arborists for the village of Arlington Heights or any of the rest of us or the different extensions offices throughout the Midwest on different uh, tips and tricks for taking care of the trees in your yard, um, as well as the actual tree ordinance itself and a list of various trees that the city suggests, uh, the village suggests using in town. Um, where we're going to start here is actually right here on the first page. You can see that there's the revised tree ordinance, which we finished the revision and it was uh, um, passed uh, during a, a village board meeting in 2019. Um, the biggest part of the updated ordinance that we worked on um, was a uh, number one right here is actually removing some trees that have since been labeled as uh, invasive trees, um, as well as adding additional trees that as our climate changes in this area in Northern Illinois, there are some trees that really only grew well in Central and Southern Illinois that are now doing really great up here um, in Northern Illinois and are just really cool trees. Um, so like bald cypress trees grow really, really well in wet areas and they have what's called knees, which is where the root kind of sticks out of the ground. Kentucky coffee trees have really compound leaves. So very like fern-like leaves. Um, and then if you actually snap a twig of a Kentucky coffee, it's like a white ring with a black dot in the middle. So a lot of really cool plants, a buckeye, sycamore, uh, tulip tree, which actually has gorgeous white blooms on it um, and really cool shaped leaves that also look like tulips. Um, so that's one thing that we worked on. But then the really big piece, which I'm going to make everybody sick by scrolling too fast, is we worked on the um, construction section. So we created this uh, legs or tree classification guide, which is where we sat down for months <laughs> and had all of us. Uh, so Mary's background uh, is vast, but has, I would say is highlighted with a lot of work with the uh, um, Park District, I mean, uh, uh, preserves with the yeah. preserves. Um, I'm an ecologist doing a lot of environmental consulting. Uh, Kevin is his background is in a lot of restoration and planting. Scott is obviously a uh, retired arborist. Sean is the current arborist here for the village. And then uh, Tony is a professor and does a lot of research on everything in the ecological world. So yeah. we sat down and we went through the entire list from the Morton Arboretum, which the Morton Arboretum list is hundreds of trees, um, some native, some non-native. And we uh, separated these trees found on the Morton Arboretum Northern Illinois tree list into one of five groups. So those groups are heritage, landmark, desirable, undesirable, and noxious. Um, and 
actually our definition here and here's delightful that these tree ratings are taking into account those fitness, which is how well a plant grows and it deals with uh, uh, stressors. So like salt tolerance is a good example of fitness, the life expectancy, some trees just live longer than other trees, um, uh, mature DBH. So DBH is a term we're going to use a couple times this evening. That means the diameter at breast height, which is how we measure the size of a tree. Um, and it's with the special tape measure that you wrap around the tree, like right about where your chest is. Um, and then weedy characteristics, which is a pretty anthropomorphic term, but it's basically a plant that is, uh, it grows very vigorously and usually in a way that outcompetes other things and is usually non-native. Um, and the whole reason that we had to do this is because of all the things I just mentioned, different trees grow at different speeds and different trees have different like maximum sizes that they grow to. So if any of you that are on the call have a maple tree in your yard, um, especially if you've got a big like silver maple or really big sugar maple, and you know, those trees can get very big. I mean, they're the really huggable trees. You can take two or three friends sometimes to wrap around one of those. Um, where we've got other trees like beeches or muscle woods that do not grow very large. And in the same amount of time that your maple tree can get big enough for someone to stand inside of it, these other trees are big enough that you might still be able to wrap around it with both of your hands, or at least with just your arms as one human being. So to try to compare those two, if you have one big maple tree on your property, or five little trees that are the same size as that maple tree, if we're only counting down how many trees are you taking down, or if we go strictly by size, it starts to get difficult to weigh the one maple tree versus the five smaller, we're going to say they're ironwood trees. Um, so we had to come up with a way, how can we equalize this? And how can we make it so that really cool trees that get really big are worth almost the same amount of value as a really cool tree that doesn't get as big? So that's where we came up with these, these groups, one through five, really. But then we came up with names that describe them. So a heritage tree is a tree that is a really nice tree, a really cool native tree that grows very slow. Um, a landmark tree is a really cool native tree, really nice tree that grows very fast and has a lot larger maximum DBH. So even like your oak tree grows a little bit slower than your maple, but it still gets massive. So your the oaks and the maples, um, except for some of the varieties of oaks that don't get as big are landmark, where then um, some of the smaller trees that I was talking about are the heritage trees. Then we have the desirable trees. So these trees might not be like your A++ tree, but it's an A plus tree. It's still a nice tree. It's just not like the super cool ones that are, they have like really great fitness. They might be a little bit more weedy. They might be uh, um, more prone to lose limb more often and therefore be um, less desirable for growing in a right of way or growing in your yard or growing in Northern Illinois. Uh, then we have our undesirable trees, which are the trees that we really don't want around. So they're usually the very weedy trees um, the trees that are popping up everywhere and that you wish you could rip them all out of your yard at any time. And then the last one are noxious trees. So those are the trees that are truly invasive species and are negatively impacting um, our neighborhoods, our forests, and our community uh, by taking over areas that, whether it's other plants, other shrubs, other trees, or other animals need to use for habitat. Um, and what we're going to get into here is that when you actually deal with construction of new, new construction on non-residential properties specifically, um, the ordinance gets into uh, replacement rates. So if you're going to take down so many trees, how many more trees are you going to rebuild? The reason that we ended up coming up with this is there's a lot of local other neighboring towns that have ordinances that require re replacement of trees. And during construction, no matter where you're doing construction in the state of Illinois, usually you have to do what's called a tree protection plan, which is before you start construction, you say, hey, these are the trees that we're not going to knock down and we're going to make sure that they survive to the end of construction. And because we keep those trees, we are going to make a deal with a town or a county to not have to plant X number of other trees when we're done. And before we rewrote the ordinance, the way that it worked in Lake Zurich is you said, 
this is our tree protection plan. And you could say our tree protection plan is we're not protecting any of the trees and we're knocking them all down. And the protection plan said, okay, that's fine. Like you didn't call out any of them that you're going to protect. So you can rip them all down and you don't have to plant any new ones. Um, there was a little bit in the ordinance talking about you needed to have like a tree per island in like a uh, um, parking lot, but that was about it. Um, so what we started looking at here is trying to come up with that like valuation. How do we make it so that when a developer is coming to Lake Zurich, that they are being intelligent about which trees they keep and which trees they rip down? Um, the worst case scenario is that you have a piece of property and on the front half, it's all buckthorn and honeysuckle and a bunch of invasive trees. And on the back half, it's all oak trees and maple trees and hickories that we have so many gorgeous ones of in Lake Zurich. And they just decide, oh, we're going to keep all the crummy ones and we're going to knock down all the nice ones. And we don't have to plant any more trees. So we were trying to take that piece out of it and make sure that uh, when a developer comes into Lake Zurich, they're thinking about how are they developing their site? What trees are they going to keep? And what trees do they need to replace? So with this plan, if you take down one of those A++ trees that grows really slow, um, you have to replace 75% of the DBH of that tree. So if that tree is this big, you have to plant another tree that's this big. If you've got five of those, you can plant five of those trees. And we're going to get into a worksheet here in a minute that'll make this make a little bit more sense. With the landmarks, so the really big A++ trees, you're replacing half of that size. Um, so that's making it so that you're thinking a little bit more about cutting down one of the little guys compared to one of the bigger ones. Desirable, 33%. Undesirable, you're not replacing anything. And then noxious, you're not, you don't have to replace any of them. And they're actually mandatory as part of new construction, which matches what Lake County is doing with all of these two. Uh, what is the Lake County program called? Like 30, 30, 30 oh, Buckthorn uh, or something? Forest Preserve? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, so in Lake County... Yeah. The whole county is trying to get rid of buckthorn. And By 2050. To to, yeah, is it 2050? Yeah. Yeah. So um, it's following the same lead as the county. Yeah. Um, so at that point, that's when we added all this additional information into um, the new construction and came up with these two things. So the first is this tree sub-value list, which is the one I talked about earlier, where we got in a room for – hours and hours at a time, <laughs> got the brain trust together. And we'd actually go home like beforehand and we would all in secret rank them all like that, I guess in secret, but separate from yeah. each other, some um, away from each other's bias. We'd rank them all ourselves. And then we'd get in back into the room and start from the front of the list and slowly argue about like, okay, is this one a one or two or three or four or five, which would end up being these names. And we just would keep arguing until we finally agreed about which all of the which rank, which rank all of these are. Right. So if you ever wanted to check this out, this is on the website. Um, when you go into protection for trees during construction and you scroll down, uh, this, it uh, right here is the tree classification list which was revised most recently, actually in uh, February of 2023, okay. and then the replacement worksheet, which we'll look at next. But um, so this is our list and it covers everything from the native trees to the non-native trees. And um, again, all the undesirables and then just a the couple of the noxious, which are mostly buckthorn and honeysuckle. Um, so I personally think it's just a cool list in the first place to be able to look at and get an idea of what are the really cool trees that you can grow around here and specifically in, you know, the Lake Zurich area. Um, it's also something that as an environmental consultant for my day job, we wanted to make sure that it was easy for someone who does want to come to Lake Zurich and develop something to be able to use these tools to make intelligent decisions in a simple way. So when they actually download this, they can download this as a spreadsheet as well. And then they, you can use that spreadsheet to cross a reference it or uh, not V lookup, but uh, a yeah. similar idea to use the one spreadsheet compared to your tree survey, which is required by both the village of Lake Zurich and anywhere else in Lake County. If you're going to do a development, you have to do a tree survey before you start the project. And they can immediately pump in. These are all the trees that we found. These are the rankings that the village of Lake Zurich is using and immediately know how many of each of these landmark, heritage, desirable, undesirable that they have, which I know you're probably just, uh, you know, chomping at the bit to know why we want to know that information and what's the usefulness of that. 
is that then you roll into this document that we ended up putting together. So this is the Village of Lake Zurich tree replacement worksheet. So um, the developer would come in and type in their, their name um, as the actual applicant, because it might be a consultant, it might be the uh, architect, the engineer, whoever, who actually owns the property. Um, and then uh, a little bit of contact information. But then you get into exactly what we were talking about before, which is this replacement rates. So if I know on my site, I have uh, so many di diameter at breast height inches. So, so many uh, added up numbers of all the sizes of trees on my site, heritage, landmark, or desirable. And I decide, you know what, I'm going to go and I'm going to cut down. We're going to go with small numbers to make this easy to work with. I'm going to cut down 10 inches of heritage. I'm going to cut down 10 inches of landmark, which is probably, this is like one tree each year. So maybe I should have gone 100. Um, I'll just do that for fun. Uh, 100 of each of these. If you're going to cut down 100 of each of these, it's going to automatically do the replacement rates we talked about, the 75, 50, and 30. And it's going to say you're cutting down 300 dBH of mature trees. And because of that, you need to replace and plant somewhere on your site um, 158 uh inches of trees to offset the amount of trees that you're chopping down. Um, any of the trees that we're asking them to plant in the village are going to be 2.5 dBH or bigger. So, you know, a tree about this big around. The reason that you want them at least that size is survivability. Um, when you get like a little tree, uh, which we call like liners that are like the size of a pencil, and um, they're a lot cheaper, but the survivability of those, of those are pretty low. And once you get any bigger than like two and a half, even like a three, or like a four or a five, um, the actual survivability of those trees drops like a rock. Um, yeah. And it takes a lot of like love and care from a human being to water them every single day and make sure that they're not getting stressed out. Um, but what I wanted to show that's really cool here is then you also can come in right here and you can subtract the total number, the total diameter of trees that you're going to plant already in your plants. So let's say I'm building a new workout facility and I already know that we're putting in 20, uh, 20 trees and they're all going to be um, 2.5. So uh, what is that? I am so bad at mental math these days. <laughs> uh, 20 geez. times 2.5. 40, 40 and 60. 60 plus 60. Huh? Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So. Okay. I know I'm planting 60 inches DBH already. I'm putting in 20 plants, 20 trees, sorry. I'm already planting uh, 60 trees or 60 inches of tree. So that leaves me with only 98. So it's double, Yeah. you know, what I've got. I've, I've got to do more, like not double of the 60, but I got to go at least another 20 trees that I got to put in, if not a couple more. So now I start playing with the numbers. So this is where the, the they can actually play this game and start deciding, okay, what if, we let that one like uh, there go. 40 inch maple stay. So we can go and say, okay, cool. Now we're only going to take 60 of the landmark out. And all of a sudden the number drops. Um, I think what before it was like 58. So yeah. only dropped by 20. But what if I say instead, okay, like we still need to do more. I'm going to keep uh, four. Oh, no. Oh no, it looks like he froze. Oh no. Yeah. What's Mary? Oh, there, oh, there okay. he is. <laughs> you froze for a second. Go ahead. Oh. <laughs> but we were getting excited because you had the map fi figured out. All right. I don't That's know what right. the last thing you saw was. Um, but then oh, I, I the dropped. Number. Okay. And then I said that I was going to uh, um, basically save four of the 10 inch trees, which then uh, leaves me again with the 60. And this time I actually dropped 30 inches because of the replacement rate instead of the 20 inches when I was just changing my landmark tree amounts. Mm -hmm. So this really allows a developer to come through this whole deal and start making some of these decisions and being intelligent about what they're going to, what they're going to drop and what they're going to keep, which then leads to the final piece. And this is where, okay, I've, I've hit this number. I've decided, you know what, I'm going to add a couple more trees and I'm going to end up planting 90 dbh on my property but that's as much as i can possibly squeeze in so we actually are trying to get them to plant as many trees on their property um, in an intelligent way that is possible 
and I'm still left with this 18 dBH that I have to do. So I can either make sure that I'm not, I reduce the amount of trees that I'm eliminating. I can plant more trees or we gave them another option of where uh, the John keeps this number up to date of how much is it costing right now on the average market value to plant a, or buy a 2.5 inch tree. So then what they can do instead is they can just multiply that number out, which it should auto populate. I'm going to have to remember what number I'm supposed to hit here. Um, and basically just run that math and do that last 18 times the 250 59 and end up just paying that dollar amount to the village. And it goes into a fund to be utilized for planting new trees throughout the rest of the village. Um, so that is how we came up with this tree replacement worksheet that feeds off of the tree selection. And um, I thought there was one more thing I wanted to show. And that was, I was going to show this Morton Arboretum. So it's like that 239 yeah. trees. So if you are looking for a tree for your own yard and deciding that you really care about the urban canopy and you think you can fit another one in your yard, um, number one, Sean, the uh, village forester, while his true job is taking care of trees that are on the village's property, um, you can totally call up the village forester and say, our village arborist, and say, hey, could you come and take a look at this location for me and tell me if you think it's like a useful spot for me to put a tree? Um, and he can totally give you input on that. So yeah. I'm giving Sean more work. But uh, um, what I was going to lead into here is you can find a tree on our list that you you're like, hey, I know I want it to be a heritage tree. And you can actually search through on the Morton Arboretum list, find one of those trees that's on the, elite, the list, like this American beach. You can click on it. You can see pictures of what the different the leaves and the uh, the flowers and the whatever the nuts or seeds are. You can kind of see what the, the stems or the uh, bark looks like on these trees. And then actually roll down and see like, okay, what's a good planting spot for it? Like a residential or park place. Perfect. My house is a residence. That's fantastic. And then actually get into the whole details of what's the mature height, mature width. Um, and then even getting down to like, how does it do with uh, like salt tolerance? What wildlife actually like to use this location? Favorite thing is it really gets into the planting consideration. So it'll warn you if it's like, hey, this one does not do well with salt, or this one is a little weedy, or it can get this disease. Um, where look at this, the American beach, the only and the only planting consideration is uh just that it might be hard to find in nurseries. But yeah. otherwise it's just a, a stellar all around tree. But uh back to what I said about the uh heritage versus the landmark, it is a slow grower. Um so yeah that's everything I wanted to cover Mary if you want to grab it from there. It's perfect. I love, love, love that spreadsheet and the math part, believe it or not. I just feel that it's, um, well, we worked really hard on it, number one, and it's up to date. We're in line with uh, the county, other municipalities. We're in line with climate change and we're in line with our soils. It's just, it was such a perfect fit. The other thing I love about the worksheet is that it gives the developers the opportunity. So there's no surprises for them. I mean, we're we're probably busting out. We don't have a lot of room left, but the room we do have left uh, for development, it, there's going to be a lot of pressure. So they, you know, everybody's on the table. Everybody's on the same page. So they don't do everything, get to the planning commission. Everybody's up in arms. You know, this way they can calculate it all and um, figure it all out for them, for themselves. And then uh, the village staff is well aware of this too. Um, we went through it with them. Kurt works really hard on that piece. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Because of the mass. And stuff. the big thing was making sure that it's like, it's not anti-business. It's no. pro-intelligent, like utilization of space. Hard and plan. we want companies coming into Lake Zurich. We want to make sure that they want to be here and that they are making decisions that are good for the long run of the entire village and making choices that are going to be, you know, some positive and make sure that it stays this beautiful place that we all know and love. And that's why we're here. Most of us. Yeah. So, okay. So you stay there, Kurt, don't go far. Cause I'm sure yep. we'll have some questions. And yep. so I'm going to do my part now and figure out how to share my screen again, because I forget every time. Oh, there it is. Got it.
And I am going to, I'll do a little bit of repeat of what um, Kurt said, but we'll, um, there's some of it. So you're seeing the first page of the Chicago Regional Tree Initiative. We're not correct? seeing it yet. Not yet. How about that? Now it's going. Okay. Boom. We got it. Great. So one of the interesting things that's been done regionally, which, you know, again, is out of Morton Arboretum. Um, we took some of this into our uh, our project of getting those ordinances updated too. There has been a study going on um, in the region, the seven county uh, Chicagoland area, that has been all about trees. And it's been about uh, historical and data collection. And again, the right tree in the right place. Um, and the best way to make so many of those decisions is through data. I mean, we can all go by what Mary says, which really I think you all should, but we need the data is the most important thing. So um, they formed the Chicago Regional Tree Initiative and there's there's partners and there's corporate partners too. ComEd's a big partner here, NICOR's a partner. So, um, you know, this isn't just um, conservation groups, but corporations that are conservation minded too. So just, uh, they have this beautiful picture here and you can see the important part of Chicago is the, the canopy that we have in the old growth. But the, um, the priorities for the region, CRTI, it's just easier to say that, was to inspire people to value trees, which I think is important to, to prove that people are studying them, there's science behind it, you know, there's validation there that it's also like we did in our worksheet. There's validation in the ones that are grown, but there's validation in a monetary value too. So, um, and then to increase the Chicago's region's tree canopy, and you'll see how far behind um, Chicago actually is and the Chicago and area, but we can take it down all the way to Lake Zurich's canopy level um, to reduce some of the threats. And if we all work together, uh, just thinking back on the emerald ash borer, the devastation that that did, working together on it as a uh, region, you know, we we were we were ready for it. We couldn't stop it, but we we started to make plans. And by making those plans, we had a better recovery. Lake Zurich's recovery actually was pretty phenomenal, and um, we also had the science going forward that we don't plant, you know. 3,000 ash trees in one subdivision. So, and then also to enhance our um, oak ecosystems that Northern Illinois, Northeastern Illinois, our uh, area is a keystone species. It's um, it's really kind of what holds a lot of uh, the ecosystems together that are native here, but also I think holds a lot of our communities together. Cause I mean, even going to Lake Zurich, you know, we all go to Paulus Park. And why do we go to Paulus Park? Because there are big, beautiful, beautiful oak, oak trees there. And they give us that that beautiful stately appearance. They give us the shade. They give us the, you know, just that kind of class. Anyway, so moving on to the maps here. So they started this project probably 16. They were dreaming 17. They started pulling scientists together. And then they went out and they collected. And um, the collection was probably over almost three years. The reports came out in 19 and 20. Um, and the, the data they needed to make recommendations, to finish the report, to, shut, to start the Oak Recovery Ecosystem Management Plan was, is a lot of it's based on these maps. And I'm a big map person. I'm not always big on data but I love the maps just because they tell a story. So here we have the tree canopy cover by the Chicago land region. And if you know a lot about some of the ecosystems that um, Illinois is famous for, we're called the Prairie State. So, you know, like 80% of Illinois was covered at one time with prairie. So once you get just west of the Chicago land area, the Grand Prairie does start. And if you've ever driven south and west of here too, it's corn, corn, soybean, corn. <laughs> so there's a reason for that. But anyway, so they had to know what was going on. So they started with the tree canopy. 
the next map they wanted was the temperature. And this one, Kurt and I think are, is really cool because uh, here, there it's populated. Well, obviously I wonder where the city is. It's the hottest part. And we all know that because the trees keep us cool when we're sitting at Paulus Park having a picnic or in my backyard. So, but having a heat map and tracing it with all this other data is key here. So we're going to keep going. And remember this Chicago land area, we will be able to take it down to the Lake Zurich area. So flood risk. This spring has been crazy. Um, and we've had other springs in Lake Zurich. We do have um, flood control and we're lucky some of our neighboring communities have much bigger flood problems than we do. Most of ours is stormwater, but um, so you can see the, the city is flooding, especially towards the south, is really high. Concrete. I'm just saying. <laughs> so this map notice Herbies. shows how susceptible each community can be. And um, the, the trees do hold a lot of that flood water back and release it slowly. So, or use it in their own uh, biological needs. And then air quality, I think we all know that too. It's, you know, smells better in the woods than it does in Walmart parking lot. But again, look how lucky we are. We're over here somewhere. So, and we'll show you more on that too. But look at, they're talking about pollution. They're talking about storing carbon. All the things that we're looking for as we move forward too in dealing with climate change. Um, makes it breathable air. I love that. Uh, we're talking about vulnerable populations and that some of the uh, improved people's quality of health in some of those communities. Priority areas. Biggest need for improved tree canopy and related benefits. That means there's too much concrete. They need more trees. The city of Chicago has addressed this quite strongly and they're moving forward. And it's with all municipalities, it's a it's a dollar thing. But um, some private organizations like um, Open Lands and uh, Morton Arboretum and the Chicago Regional Tree Initiative and uh, even Botanic Gardens has jumped in to help. So the forest preserves are a big part of that too. And then tree canopy. So those are cool. So I'm going to move down a bit and we're going to talk about the oak connectivity connectivity map. And look, it talks about the oaks and how they were all connected, kind of, and it had different um, ecosystems. You had the savanna, you had the woodland, you had um, the barrens and savanna, woodland. Yeah, I think I got it. The municipal canopy summaries. So we're going to look for our Lake Zurich on the reports here. So it has to populate. Here it comes. So here we're getting closer. So, oh, look, every single little town in the seven region area. So we're going to go over to Lake County. And then um, McHenry County, where? I think you just hit McHenry on accident. Oh, did I really? That's habit, huh? There. There we go. So then we're going to scroll down. We talk about the uh, county as a whole. So you can see the vegetation, really, our land cover is kind of cool. I just love seeing it like this. It helps me understand. So this is our region and this is our county. And the possible planting could go up quite a bit in the county, in the region, and then the county too. I'm getting those confused. But it's even interesting to look at like Lake County is actually doing better than the Chicago region when it comes to the percentage of land that's actually tree canopy. I know. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And Cook County Forest Preserve has over 10,000 acres, where Lake County has, I believe they're up over five now. So you can't say this is, you know, all the forest preserves. It's also that people in Lake County do value um, trees and that we do have quite a bit that is not concrete. 
But anyway, we're going to go all the way back, and then we're going to go down to Lake Zurich. Bells, there they are. Lake Zurich, so we get our own study. So um, I did meet with some of the people that were out from the Chicago Regional Trees Initiative. During COVID, they were actually out even um, doing last minute measurements for our canopy. So they selected so many of these sites in the seven uh, county area randomly. So it was a random survey. And a couple of the sites came up exactly in Lake Zurich. I believe we had three. And two of them were in the very oak ecosystem populated side of town and one was not. So I think they got a pretty good survey. So if you go down for the summary for Lake Zurich, here we go, Lake County to Lake Zurich. We're, you know, I mean, vegetated for the county's 44%, Lake Zurich's 33. 33% is canopy for the county, 28 for Lake Zurich. One of the things um, we were, Kurt and I were talking about was the building on the Lake Zurich part, 12% and in the county at six. Well, th this is 12 in our industrial part, I would say. And then you talk about our roads. And then this little sliver here is bare soil. So I thought that was interesting. So that is uh, that, let's go down more. So percent land cover by land use. So this, I mean, they took this data and they went far down, they dug deep. So they actually made sure what was canopy, what was vegetation, what was soil. And then they put it under on the left-hand side here, whether the land was vacant, was it a utility, was it transit lines? Um, let's see the big black thing, hmm, 22 and 12, you think? And then parkland. And then they had some bare soil on the parkland. So I'm figuring that's our ball field, you know, from a satellite or whatever that they used. So natural areas, we, we came out kind of well. And then, so they got all the way down to some agriculture left. So what their perimeter <clears throat> on Lake Zurich was, I, I'd have to see a little bit closer, but. And so, some of this data, they'll even, they mentioned in the report that they yeah. really do need an updated Lake Zurich tree survey, which yes. Sean Walkington is actually working on. So the um, village arborist is working on right now. So yep. that's actually something else that the tree commission has been very supportive of is taking all of our work in the actual um, greater field of environmental science and ecology and, yeah. and um, uh, goodness, all the different sciences and trying to assist the village and assist Sean with uh, pulling in a lot of this data. So uh, myself and Kevin spent a lot of time with different staff from the village and with Sean, getting them all um, set up to start using uh, um, basically uh, satellite tracking information. So GIS, Global Information Systems data to start updating all of the trees that are along the right of way that actually are maintained by the village to have a little bit better actual mapping of what how many of these trees we actually have and where they're located. Because in this report, they will mention at some point, like, this data could be even better if the village could provide an updated tree survey. Yeah, because our original tree survey was already almost, it was 15 years old, easy. Yeah, and I mean, Sean's kept track individually, but it was a program that was dated. So as the tree commission, too, we invested and we shopped for new um, inventory uh, computerware. And... The prices were like 20000 So Kevin and Kurt got together and they saved the village a whole bunch by setting up spreadsheets and being able to match the old um, the old survey queries and getting the same information without spending 20 grand. And so they trained um, Sean and some of the other staff on how to do it. They set it up on their iPads so Sean can do it when he's out in the field. He doesn't have to, you know, take notes. So this is hands-on, you know, it's up-to-date stuff data that they're using. So at the end of the study too, uh, this mapping, they came up with places that were plantable within the village. And the highest places were found, I found this interesting, institutional agricultural properties. 
So backyards are great, but there's still a lot of places that could be planting. Uh, school districts, industrial parks, uh, retail definitely. Uh, the agricultural properties, I'm not 100% sure where those are, Kurt. It's probably talking about the area across from like Mariano's. Oh, yeah. Last couple big open spots. Yeah, and that's going to turn to houses soon, I've heard too. Um, then we're going to the land cover area by use too. So this, um, they have a high proportion of plantable space, these industrial and agricultural spots, but the types are for a relatively small area. So most of the land is residential followed by transit. So transit would be 12, 22, and the other road, major roadways throughout Lake Zurich. But we all know that because we're, we're caught in the traffic going around town trying to find it. So um, there's just so much information here, but this one is cool too, because they put it down to the acreage. I almost, can you go back up one? I sure. feel like the plantable space one and above is actually pretty useful to break down what you were trying to say earlier. Okay. Um. So obviously you can see that this, what is potentially plantable according to the CRTI's review, it like the largest of the light green bars is that residential bar. But yeah. it's also the largest acreage of cover. So, I mean, it's like less than half is actually plantable within that area that is then, you know, the whole residential section. And that's where I think something that Mary pointed out that's insane is if you look at institutional or industrial, I mean, and even commercial, yeah. those areas of what's plantable is actually a larger majority of the actual entire, um, you know, total acreages of cover so um, which yeah which is what you mentioned earlier the fact that like even when you set the building you take the buildings and the parking lots and some of that out of there that like yeah a very often in the current status of how a lot of different things are working to yeah. fix climate issues it's getting pushed on all of us as the individual homeowner and landowner but if you really look at this, yes, clearly you can make a huge difference by doing something on the piece of property that you own. But for us to make a stance as a village or as a community and as, a, you know, even when there are new developments that are happening, there's a lot of percent, like good hunks of each of these different land use types that really have a ton of plantable area in them. So that's what you had mentioned earlier, Mary. You were saying even though like the industrial is like a smaller section than the residential, a majority of it is plantable, which is interesting to learn well it's interesting and you know for them it could be it could be a little bit of a strain because now they have to you know the mowers can't go through as fast they got it you know but then again just um earth day the 22nd i was over in the industrial park with a uh uh industry g2 uh evolution they're one of the partners with ancient oaks they've been great partners we planted a tree with their employees on Earth Day. And I thought that sent a really good message. And then they moved a picnic table right away over there so that, you know, everybody could have break time right by the new tree. I just thought that was so wonderful. And it was so cool. And um, then I started to look around. I'm like, there's so much room here. So it uh, it's an opportunity. And it also, this too showed me too that, um, how much we do value trees in Lake Zurich personally and how so many people are doing their part by planting them in their yards and such. Um, this one, I, it cracks me up that it goes by acre because all of a sudden you realize how many acres are in Lake Zurich. Um, but look, when you match us to our surrounding communities and it makes us look, makes us look good in a way because we can't match North Barrington because they don't have the retail. So even with all our retail, I mean, Kildare has beaten us too, but Hawthorne Woods and Forest Lake and Deer Park. I mean, I think we're we're doing well, but we could do better. So the building, we definitely have the most buildings and we all knew that from the retail, but we do benefit from that retail in other ways too. Less canopy cover and more great infrastructure than the neighbors. Um, this is the canopy change over time. 
which is uh Kevin, you understood this one better than me. I did not get this one very much. Um, the canopy change. Yeah, I'll, I'll take over real quick. If you yeah, mind. yeah, do this one because you understood it better than I did. So the really quick thing to take away from this piece is the fact of, so the um, the the light green, because this picture up here is actually from the Morton Arboretum, so it's nothing right. to do with Lake Zurich. But these, these stats do have to do with Lake right. Zurich. And the whole point is that in, the light green is in 2010 the percent cover of each of our various type of land uses. And then the 2017 is what the percent cover of trees was of these various land uses. What's mind boggling about this is between 2010 and 2017, yes. our actual percent cover of trees went up in every single land use, yep. which to me is pretty mind boggling. That doesn't seem that possible, but that is nuts. And when you it's summarized over here in Lake Zurich, canopy has actually increased from 24% to 28% in these seven years over time, which is. It's got to be the planting from the. Um, more of the ash borer. The replanting. Yeah, it probably is. All the money that I was mean, spent. We put in 3,000 trees. Yep. Yeah. So that's going to be there. We're running out of time here, Mary. Yeah. Um, yeah. Go ahead. This is a quick one that they showed that to looks at. This is Lake Zurich specific. Yes. It's an estimate, but they're looking at the fact of what's the actual benefit monetary wise of the various trees and the canopy that we have in Lake Zurich. And you're looking at just in sequestered carbon, it's almost 100,000 stormwater benefits. So it's, a, you know, 130,000 and air quality, 140,000. I mean, stormwater, that makes a huge difference if it makes it our the rest of our infrastructure last longer for dealing with uh, um you know, less actual um, volume in each storm. And I think putting it on a dollar amount, um, I think is important to a lot of people. So now you can really justify even going farther in our surveys, in our plantings, and again, not just on public space. Oh, I like this map too. I know you do. So I'm going to zoom in once we explain it. Oh, yeah. So first the pre, so pre-settlement is this light gray. And then the green, the light green is where in 1993, there was oak, was. Uh, but oak dominated areas. And then 2010 dominated oak areas is the dark. Um, the and dark. don't worry, don't worry, Kurt caught that it, they've got the wrong name there, Lake Villa. It's yeah, over here to the right. The wrong name, but it's the right info in the right. It map. is the right, yeah, it is the it's correct the info. wrong name. So you can see here the actual like oak dominated areas. Settlement, yeah. Yeah. Well, pre-settlement being the gray. So we really only had oak dominated on the western half. Uh, half, so of the, half of the town, yeah. Half of the town to begin with. Yeah. But then when you look at what's left, um, Mary was very quick to point out what are the, the three big spots that you can quickly identify. Um Wallace Park, point to that. Wallace Park's over here. Yeah. And you can actually even tell like where the yeah. the wooded sections are that like the uh the pumpkin fest and everything take yeah. place underneath. And um yeah, I mean area. that's exactly what you got going on over here. And then the this is two locations really that are butted up against each other with uh being the the legs are a golf course. Um actually and then would Breezewald be here? Yeah, Breezewald is about Breezewald. there. Yeah. Breezewald and then Cushman would be all in here. Yep. Then if you go back straight from there is where you hit Oak Ridge Marsh. So, yeah, this spot? Is this Oak Ridge? Yeah, a little bit further back. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so, I mean, definitely um, how important the the small 50% of where it was and we're down to what, 10% of what we have left. So and we, crazy to think about these places that we all can like pull out of the top of our heads are the ones that you can actually see very clearly on the map. Are. I mean, the fact that Breezewald shines right over here is is nuts. Like you can yeah. almost see the shape of it. So, I mean, that's these places that mean a lot to all of us are, yeah. you know, pretty critical remaining oak habitat. Definitely. All right. What do we got after that one? I think that that we should probably open up to questions. Yeah. There are recommendations made later in the report um, as they go down for Lake Zurich. And of course, we're Kurt and I were talking beforehand. We're like, dang, we're doing them. So um, I don't see any questions in the chat and Valerie's coming on now. So she'll let us know. But I did want to make sure. I don't, 
I don't see any either. If anyone has a question, go ahead and yeah, type yep. it in the chat or the Q and A. Um, I do want to, you know, kind of give a shout out to Kurt because he loves doing this stuff and he loves manipulating this stuff, and he's really good at it. Um, but he will be leaving the tree commission. So we're really sad. I specifically want to make sure that I thank Kurt for all of his trials and tribulations because us old folks did give him a hard time a lot of times. But it was wonderful um, all those years to have that um, enthusiasm and knowledge base. And um, and also to he was working in the field and on a different side. So having that view and bringing it in, working with developers and engineers was huge. So he helped us so much. So thank you, Kurt, for everything. Thank you, Mary. That means a lot. And yeah. if anyone on the call or anyone who sees this video is interested in getting involved in the uh, Tree Commission, I cannot say enough great things about it. And it's an awesome experience for anyone who's really passionate about taking care of our urban canopy and making sure that this village that we all love so much stays the way it has when it comes to the fact of like we – it's value. something that we clearly value and it makes this place beautiful and it makes property values better. And it's just a useful thing and makes even the lake as beautiful. It is to have the trees all the way around. Someone uh, asked the question. There is a question. And I'll take this because some, I get some, I argue with arborists about red buds and I have seen them in the wild and I have one in my front yard. I, I had um, somebody from Garfield park conservatory in one of my classes. And she said down there, they call it trees with, junk on the trunk so <laughs> it blooms on the trunk and the branches and they're just beautiful they can't get weedy so if you're using them as a uh mine's in my front yard so i kind of you know make it look like a little mini tree but i have friends who use it almost like a hedge so you can manipulate now kurt's gonna what did we value it at yeah so we have it as a heritage so we after oh, all of our arguing native. So we've got it as not only is it a nice tree, but it they grow they don't get that big. They actually grow pretty fast, but yep. they hit like a max maturity. They're really like a mid canopy tree, yep. so they don't get as tall usually. I mean, every they're all like living things, right? And they're all going to react to stimulus a different way. And some trees get taller than others, and some get more bushy than others. Um, but they're really awesome trees. Like Mary's yeah. saying, absolutely gorgeous. They've got heart shaped this leaves time of year. and. You can get single stemmed ones or multi stemmed ones that are more bushy. When you get a big, either of them actually, they can turn into awesome climbing trees too when they get old, like good sized and still staying pretty low to the ground. So they're a great nesting tree for oven birds and some of the little warbler types too. So when they come in at that, you know, that shrubby layer in the woodland, um, that's where a lot of those little woodland birds that we need places for them to nest now um, because we have tall trees and we've got this we don't have anything in between so they do they do fill that gap too with wildlife great so, good question. question thank you <laughs> thank that's you. the only one we got i'm yeah, glad it was that one yeah well, well thanks thank valerie you. for having us thank you kurt and mary uh, wonderful presentation as always we always love working with ancient oaks um and uh, you guys do some fabulous programs for us. So I really appreciate it. Uh, again, we'll put the uh, program up on our YouTube channel within the next few days if you want to um, refer back to anything that was discussed tonight. Um, have a great evening, everyone. Good night, Kurt. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye, Kurt. Bye. <laughs>